हरि ओम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभा निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देव सर्वकार्यशु सर्वदा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुर्साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओं सहनावत सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर कर्वाहै तेजस्वीनावदीतमस्त मिदिषावि ओम शांत शांत शांति श्री गुरु प्यो नम नमस्ते एंड अ वॉम वेलकम टू यू ऑल वी आर इन द फाइनल वल्ली ऑफ द कथोपनिषद द्वितीय अध्याय तृतीय वल्ली यमा धर्म राजा इज ब्रिंगिंग इन द एंटायर वेदिक टीचिंग टूगेदर वंस अगेन फिलिंग इन द फाइनल डिटेल्स ऑफ आत्मा एंड अनात्मा many times these fine nuances become an obstruction to the clarity of the subject especially when it is such a big leap the whole perception of what is real and unreal of who am i is changing with these teachings listen to let us listen intently we start with a recap of last week's mantra uh, over to you ulas thank you neeta hari om shri guru bhyo namaha As Nita mentioned that this is the final valley of Kathopanishad, and we are going to talk about what are the nat what is the nature of Brahman, what is the what are the sadhanas that we can do, what are the benefits of this knowledge. So to start with, this is these are the first two shlokas mantras, in which the in the very first mantra we are starting to discuss about what exactly is the world, what exactly is the substratum for the world. what are the what is the nature of the brahman and all so in the next slide when we go the very first thing says urdhva mulo avakshakah this whole world is just like an inverted fig tree this whole samsara is like there is there are so many similarities which are brought about between the tree and the samsara but the main important thing that we need to see here is that there are roots which are the ones which support every tree but they are not visible from naked eyes they are not perceptible in the same manner there is brahman which is supporting which is the substratum which is the aadhar of everything that we see that may not be perceivable by our naked senses or sense organs but that is the one which is upholding everything and what type of a brahman this is it is tadeva shukram tad brahma which is very pure it is the purest thing that there is right because everything else might have all punya karma pap karma everything else with those are associated with the sansaric things but here it is absolute there is no impurity there it is eternal there may be so many things which are ephemeral in the world everything is ephemeral in the world for that matter but this brahma is sanatana it is eternal it is always there it supports everything it supports all experiences it supports all the loka that says tasmin loka shrita sarve everything it supports and then tadu na natyeti kashchana there is nothing that goes beyond this there is nothing exceeds that like all the dreams come in that person only well, whether we call it waker or dreamer but there is nothing that the dream will be outside of the of that waker so everything is inside that only so all the things that we are seeing are all the projections of that brahman only then in the next uh, verse it says yadidam kinch jagat sarvam everything that you see around प्राण एजति निस्रतम वेदर इट इज एजति वेदर इट इज मूविंग निस्रतम वेदर इट इज इमर्जिंग एवरीथिंग दैट यू सी इज हैपनिंग इन दिस ब्रह्मन ओनली देयर इज नथिंग एल्स दैट देयर इज सो इट बिकम्स लाइक एंड इन द नेक्स्ट वर्ड्स आल्सो वी विल सी दैट इट इज द इंटेलिजेंट कॉज एज़ वेल एज़ द मटेरियल कॉज दैट्स द जस्ट दैट वाज बीइंग टोल्ड इट इज द द वेरी मटेरियल आउट ऑफ व्हिच द वर्ल्ड इज मेड एंड इट्स लाइक द पॉटर आल्सो हु इज मेकिंग द पॉट सो then the next line it says that mahad bhayam vajram udyatam so it is as if like there is a let's say traffic cop standing on the traffic light you fear the traffic cop because he is the one who is enforcing all the laws 
and because we are in those laws are being enforced that there are no accidents otherwise if one person breaks the laws there can be so much of havoc if let's say sun shifts just a a, a, sec, a, a meter here or there everything is going to collapse so there are specific laws and brahman is the one who is that traffic cop there that is how the whole world is being sustained in the third verse uh, third mantra also uh, they, they give other examples also like fire operates through those laws sun operates through those laws indra operates through those laws vayu and even yama operates through those laws so brahman is the adhishthata of everything because of that only everything is emerging and maintaining so and those are the laws which everybody follows and once those who know about this etad viduram amritaste bhavanti all the people who know about this and the great thing which i like in this is bhavanti it means it is plural it's not just one person who will get all this anybody and everybody who gets to understand this knowledge gets liberated so in the next slide we see in the fourth verse that iha ched iha ched shakat bodhum prak sharirasya visrasah the one who knows all this before the fall of this body which means the one who becomes jivan mukta the one who understand all this then there is no more need for getting another body so you get out of that punarapi jananam punarapi maranam but the ones who do not get it in this janma they again have a reason to get another body so they will again get that body and then the goal will still remain the same to understand all this only so until we get that it is like an infinite loop you keep going through that once you understand that you are liberated from that because you now are not identifying with that body the whole nature is going to still continue its own course but the identification is now with the the real thing rather than this ephemeral thing and in the last mantra in the next slide it is being asked that this knowledge can be only understood in a particular loka or it is available everywhere else also so the yama dharma raja says that it is available everywhere else also you can get it anywhere the only thing is that in manushya loka it is very clear just like a mirror if you are looking your face in very clearly in a mirror then it says yatha darshi tathatmani you will see it very very clearly so the good news is we are human birth so we have uh, we have the best uh, uh, opportunity to acquire this knowledge in pitra loka also it is available yatha swapne tatha pitra loka but it will appear as if like it is a dream so uh, like dreams are fleeting they come and go they change so it will not be very very um, you know it will not that nishtha will not be there it will come and go so it is there but it is of low quality knowledge in gandharva loka where we are doing all the entertainment fun dance music again it is there but it is very vague like you see your face in a in a in a water if there is some wind if there is some kind of a prarabdha etc that comes then it becomes again disturbed it's a yathapsu pariva dad drishe tatha gandharva loke like gandharva loke in that it is very vague and in brahma loke it is very very clear again just like darkness and lightness it is very hard like we saw in 8th chapter in gita also getting to brahma loka that krama mukti path is not easy so chaya tapa yo riva brahma loke so the easiest thing is and the best high quality 24 karat gold we get in manushya loka also and it is easiest also so and the good news is we are there so there is nothing that we need to wait for and we are here so let's go and get it thank you hari om thank you very much ullas you have a very nice knack of simplifying all these teachings and that is something we need to learn from you the same verse can be explained in a very simple way without too many uh, uh high funda words and you get the point this is a very typical style of swami paramarthananda to completely recap in the first 10 or 15 minutes he doesn't bother about the time he goes back into everything that we studied in the last class and thereby in each class we don't learn only five new mantras we also recap five it is like learning them once again sada shiva samarambham shankar acharya madhyamam asmada acharya paryantam vande guru paramparam om Dear friends, we are coming to the end of a wonderful Upanishad, the Katha Upanishad. And in this Upanishad, we have gone through this topic once again. Can Atma or Brahman be known through scriptures? Now remember, scriptures are spoken words by the Guru, written words by the scriptures. 
So the same written words are received to us from the Guru as spoken words and we listen to them. In all our interaction with the Guru and with all the Gurus that we have interacted like Swami Anubhavananda, Swami Paramarthananda, all that we have done with them is that we have sat and listened to them. There was no special uh, any other class. Now, the question is, <clears throat> do we need something more than just listening to the teacher to get Brahma Vidya? Now, if you read the scriptural words, there are many conflicting statements. I've touched on this before when the Kathopanishad dealt with the certain words where through the Manasaiva Aptuvyam Neha Nanati Kinchana. That means only through the mind you can get by no other means. But there are certain scriptural statements which also very confidently say the other way. Yato vacho nivartante, that, yatha, that about Brahman, vachaha, speech, goes and gets reflected. It cannot describe about Brahman. Aprapya manasasaha, even the mind is not something that can get to Brahman. Now, one day we will study the Keno Upanishad. The Keno Upanishad is unique in so many ways. In the Keno Upanishad, there is a phrase, I have referred to this before, Na tatra chakshur gachati. Brahman is not something that can be seen by your eyes. Na vak gachati. Not something that can be described by your speech. No manaha. The mind can. Na vidmaha. It is not something that can be known. Na vijani ma. It is not something that I can teach. Now here is a teacher who is confessing all these problems. Now, if you have trusted and gone to a teacher for many years and then we are expect, expecting something to happen and you hear these words, it can be very discouraging. Now, don't worry, we'll continue because there are reassuring statements also. I have gone to the Bhagavad Gita. Let us see what the Bhagavad Gita in the 15th chapter says. Yatanto yogi naschainam pasyanti atmanam avastitam yatanto api Akritatmanam nainam pasyanti achetasah. Word by word. Okay, I have, uh, I'll skip this and come. Yoginaha. Yatanti, that means the yogi. We'll call all of us who are striving. Pasyanti, are able to see the atmanam avastitam. In all of us, there is the atma that is situated. In fact, that atma is the real, and the body mind is the only instrument. So those of us who strive, thanks to our Guru and Shastra, are able to discover there is something called the Atma. That Atma is the real me. The body-mind is only the incidental me. And I have discovered. And you get that feeling, ah, yes, I have got it. My life is Danyaha, Danyaha, Krita, Kritasya. There is nothing more to do than I time pass my life. On the other hand, for some reason, if my mind is not yet refined, in one of the previous examples, somebody showed, I think it was Dr. Ravi Shankar, who gave an example of the knob. You remember these olden days when you have to have this FM stations, you had to have a knob that had to be fine-tuned to be able to get that particular station. Now it is all uh, electronically controlled. So you have to fine-tune your mind. Akrita Atmana. Atmana means the mind. That mind that is not so refined, na enam pasyati. You are not able to see, even though you are striving, achetasaha, because your mind is not able to be refined. This is what the Bhagavad Gita says. So the Bhagavad Gita says, a refined mind is able to see the atma that is situated within us, but that unrefined mind may be seeing, may be experiencing, may be the atma itself, but then is not able to perceive. So please refine your mind and discover yourself. That is what the Bhagavad Gita says in the 15th chapter. But before that, there's one more word which I have skipped. Manasaivaidam aptavyam neha nanasti kinchana. No other method. It is only through the mind you will be able to attain. This is the same Yamadar Maharaja has said. And when we studied this word at that time, I went into a lengthy discussion like this to say how the mind gets Brahma Vidya. 
and there we discussed what you know what is vritti vyapti what is phala vyapti it happened i think session 17 please go back to one of those classes and see how the mind gets spiritual knowledge and then i spoke about the light and the reflected light give so many examples worth going through that once again but today we'll look at some other topic not some other topic the same thing the same thing how to get brahma vidya through the mind now we are going through this for so many classes now this is a little tangential class now how to discover god brahman atma purnatvam these are synonyms synonyms for the same thing how to get this utter fulfillment in life but all i have is a teacher who does not give me a practical demonstration now for example kedarnath i want to know about kedarnath i have never been to kedarnath somebody gives a nice description about kedarnath they can be showing me videos they can be but then this is all paroksha jnanam one day i go to that place and i feel the ground of kedar i smell i hear i feel that place now that knowledge can be a certainly different now how to discover brahma through all the tools that we have now what we have we have vedantic scriptures vedantic scriptures are the only means of atma jnanam of course with the help of a guru now today's class or the in the introduction to today's class i will see how the words can reveal brahman since uh, since the scriptures point out that the brahman is beyond description brahman has no attributes that a brahma has no comparison it cannot be compared to anything else and yet the teacher is able to succeed now i'm not sure if that kenopanishad verse comes yeah the same kenopanishad verse comes here once again why does it come once again because even though the teacher says you know i have i do not know it is not something that you can see it is not something that you can speak about it's not something that you can know through the mind it is not something that i know or i can teach but then the teacher makes a confession you know my teacher had a very peculiar method of teaching he had a very innovative method of teaching and because of that innovative method i have got it and because i have got it i'll be able to teach you so don't worry so here you have a teacher who is telling you although brahman has all these difficulties in getting brahma jnanam my teacher i had a wonderful teacher and that teacher has given me this knowledge he taught me through an indirect method today we will look at what is those indirect method the teacher helps you to give because through directly it is not something that you can see it is not an object if it is an object i can take you there i can take you to kailash manasarovar i can say see this is the object i can take you to the operating room to show a heart or the brain it is not an object if it is not an object then how do you teach that so the kain upanishad says there is a peculiar method i will read even though words cannot reveal brahman by a normal method words can reveal brahman through a special method shri dakshina murti is also called as maunam vyakya prakatita para brahma tatvam yuvanam yuvanam here is a young teacher who has been able to teach you through indirect communication why indirect communication because there is no direct communication possible it is not an object to teach you but there are indirect methods what are those indirect methods now brahman may be indicated indirectly without talking about it swami ji always gives this example of a mother who says my elder son is very intelligent indirectly she has said that the younger son is not so and if the younger son is there he immediately gets a signal although the mother has not spoken about him at all so that is why gautama buddha said about god nothing can be spoken now he has spoken something about brahman what has he spoken nothing can be spoken he has said when he says god cannot be defined you have defined by god by saying it cannot be defined so how does vedanta do vedanta has got a very innovative indirect method and that is called the na iti na iti not this not this and we have that very famous song by adi shankara 
which is part of today's class. In today's class, uh, the first mantra, Dr. Sanjay will be explaining about Panchakosha Viveka. Panchakosha Viveka has come many times. Do you remember? We are concluding the Kathopanishad. And in these concluding verses, the teacher comes back to Panchakosha Viveka by teaching you what is Neti Neti. Mano Buddhi Hankara. I am not the Mano Maya Kosha. I am not the Vijnana Maya Kosha. I am not the Anna Maya Kosha. I am not the Prana Maya Kosha. So Mano, Mano Buddhi Hankara Chittani Naham. Indirectly, the teacher may not say what it is. Chidananda Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham. Now, that is one method. One method is by the indirect method. By negating. It can be Panchakosha Viveka. It can be Avastha Traya Viveka. It can be Drikdrishya Viveka. And all these are called techniques of Prakriya that the teacher methods gives you indirect methods by saying not this, not this, not this, not this. Finally, you come to somebody who's saying not this. Now, there is another method. Now, I always wanted to remind you Two things. And these two things are there. Brahma Vidya is very clear. The first is the two fundamental principles. I am something other than whatever I experience. Whatever I experience is not me. Mano buddhi hankara chittani naham. That is the what we discovered by the neti neti method principle one. The second fundamental principle is the nirguna method. The nirguna method is any attributes that you see belong to the object of experience, I am nirguna. Now, nirguna, how can nirguna or the absence of attributes be used as a method to describe, for example, and Swamiji uses the example abundantly. There are several containers, five or six containers. One has water, one has tender coconut water, one has tea, one has coffee, one has got uh, a soft drink. There is one without anything. And Swamiji says, can you bring that empty glass? Now, empty is not an attribute. Emptiness is not a positive attribute. But yet, you are able to recognize that because of the, you know, when you can, when there are attributes, no attributes. Another example is given when there are a number of people in a room, but there's one person who does not have hair. Now, lack of hair or baldness is not a positive attribute. But yet, you can use that to indicate something which does not have attributes. So we have learned two methods. One is the neti neti. Neti neti, the process, process of not negating. With this, we have to completed the two fundamental principles. I am someone other than whatever I experience, and I am the one without any attributes. The second principle is amazing because this gives you my limitless nature. What is anantatvam is discovered by the second method. Because any attribute produces limitations. Now, absence of attributes or nirguna can be used as a method to reveal the anantatvam brahman. Now, this is what gives us liberation. When you discover that I have no attributes. I have no attributes in time. That means I am limitless in time. I have no death. I have no attributes in space. I'm all pervading. I'm as big as Brahman is. Brahman means the big one. Now, there is another method. And this method is called the use of a temporary or an incidental attribute. Now, there is a row of houses. You are taking somebody to help. And this is a classical Vedantic example. And once you know these examples, you cannot improve on those examples. You use the same example. Shastras use the word Kakavat Griham Devadatta Griham. I'm taking you to tell you which is Devadatta's house. Unfortunately, Devadatta is in a colony of similar houses. Externally, all the houses look distinct. And from a distant, I have to tell this fellow, please go to that house. That is Devadatta's house and deliver this courier or give him the message or something like that. All right. Now, I'm trying to tell you how can I help you to find that place. At that moment, a crow comes and sits on that house. Oh, then you say that that house in which there is a crow, can you recognize? Okay, all right. Now you got your bearings. Now that is the house you have to go to. It. Now the crow will be there for some time, but then you have got an indicator. 
This is called an incidental attribute. Now, as far as Brahman is concerned, what is that incidental attribute? Consciousness can be with the body. Consciousness can be without body-mind. Now, for example, if the body drops, consciousness continues to. So we say consciousness is not part, product, property of the body. It is an independent entity which enlivens the body. And if the body drops, con consciousness continues to be there. So this is an incidental association. Consciousness. When there is consciousness and body, during this temporary association, I can point out, see, not the body, consciousness. So Atma can be indirectly revealed through this method. And this is the third method. There is one last method. That is revealing Brahman through unreal attributes. Now, what do you mean by an unreal attributes? For example, I see the blue sky. Blueness is not an attribute of Akasha or space. But then to a child or to somebody, I indicate that blueness as the sky. So, so too, Brahman, in relation to the world, Brahman is considered as the Sakshi or the Atma. So, although it is unreal in relation to the unreal world, Brahman is considered as a Sakshi. So, Sakshitvam can be taken as an unreal attribute. Now, we have got four. I come to the crux now. And what is the crux? Spoken and written words can give only indirect knowledge. Now, only, for example, I've given the Kedarnath example. I have never been to Kedarnath. I've seen so many videos. I have seen so many photographs. But then, once I go there, can you see when it becomes not Paroksha, but Pratyaksha, my knowledge has a newer dimension so too. So too in medical school, when you go to the operating room, when you handle the patient directly, there is a new dimension. Is there something like that that is required as far as Brahma Vidya? That is the question now. That means I have Dvaita experience. That means I'm here. The world is there. Now, how do I get Advaita experience? Now, this is what the teachers have to say. Now, from Paroksha to Aparoksha. Now, how do I get practical knowledge? Now, this is a repetition. I will, for clarity, I will go through this slowly. Since Vedanta is in the form of words, it can give knowledge. It can give only worldly knowledge, if you want that word. Such knowledge is incomplete unless it is com com converted into a direct experience. So how can Vedantic knowledge be complete? Should we do any sadhanas? Because there are many people who say you have to do, you have to get to Nirvikalpaka Samadhi to get Brahman experience. So are there any sadhana that can, can be converted uh, so that we have an experience of Brahma? So they invariably say Brahma Jnanam is different and Brahma Anubhava is different. And they say you have to do various forms of meditation. But our teachers are very clear. Swami Paramarthananda is very clear. He says our problem is not lack of experience, it is lack of knowledge. Vedanta does not want to give us any new experience. We already have that experience all the time. We do not require any new experience. We require that knowledge to be able to claim between the two experiences, the Dvaita experience and the Advaita experience, which is the real me. Now, I experience limitations during the Jagrat and Swapna. Why? Because of my mind. Because now when the mind comes into being, I experience I'm only this much and there is an unlimited world ahead of me. What happens in my deep sleep? The mind is not there. And when there is, there is no mind, there is no borders, there is no sense of time, there is no sense of space, there is no sense of objects. There is nirguna as far as my experience is concerned and I experience advaita. Now, do you need any special advaita experience? I experience Advaita all the time. The teachers also give you that photograph experience. That child is also me, although my body has undergone so many changes. So the problem, therefore, is wrong conclusion. I have concluded that I am this limited, growing, growing, growing body, when in reality, I am the limitless, non-changing Atma. To that Guru, what kind of namaskaran can we do? 
who is helped up to this. But I offer my profound namaskar to Swami Paramarthananda for having given us this knowledge only through words and having helped us to get the right conclusion. Why we are studying Kathopanishad? To get us the right conclusion from Brahma Vidya. Then I know that Advaita Aham, the limitless Aham, is my real nature. I, the limited I, is there in Jagrat and Swapna is Mithya. This is not a new experience, but it is a new knowledge that I am Atma Brahma. This knowledge helps me to attain Parama Purusharta or Moksha. We come to the verses for today. The opening verse will be explained by Dr. Sanjay Marotra. Dr. Sanjay, please. Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha. Next slide, sir. So in the introduction to this explanation of the verse 6, uh, I will give a bit of a background which has already been given uh, in the recap. In this few verses, Yama is discussing the favorable factors required for Brahma Gyan. And as Ullas said, that the most important prerequisite, which is the primary prerequisite, is the human birth. And to get human birth, which is very, very rare, because to be able to cross the ocean of samsara, one requires a special body, special bore, which is your human body. But unfortunately, this boat is not permanent. And it should be utilized before it gets lost. And we have discussed that how mind is important for understanding, because the mind is required for understanding. But what are the other factors which are required for us to, for example, the Brahma Jignyasa, seeking, going to Guru, leading the Shastra, doing Shravanam, Mananam, and then, of course, the Vidyasana, which is the practice. Those who can get Brahma Jnana in this life are released from the Sansara, and they're, of course, called Jivan Mukta, which we have probably, all of us have known. But somebody who squanders this opportunity, he obviously would be born again in any of the 14 lokas, in any body. So if you miss the bus, don't worry, you would have a chance, but again, Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Mannam will continue unless this body-mind complex gets the inclination to know thyself, to know itself, and that is the Atma Vichara. Next slide, sir. So in the fifth verse, and this question is very commonly asked by people that what happens, and all of us probably have this wonderment, that what happens to us after death? And that was the last question which was asked by Nachiketas to uh, Yamaraja. And Yamaraja said, no, I'm not gonna give the answer, but ultimately we have got a bit of an answer that why this body is more important, this Bhuloka is more important but for knowing the highest because it's the most clear, the clarity is the best because the mind is very clear in this Bhuloka only. So the fifth verse said, Yatha darshe tathapmani, Yatha swapne tathapitra loke, Yatha psuparev dadrashe tathagandharva loke, Chaya tap yoriva Brahma loke. In this verse, Lord Yama is describing whether this knowledge can be obtained in other lokas also, other than the Manushya loka. It can be, but it's difficult in other lokas, as in this loka, this knowledge is the clearest. And that is why the human birth is the best to acquire the knowledge. It is as clear as the image face on a mirror. But when you go to Pitra loka, which is after death, which is called Pitra loka, or the state of not the embodiment. So we are not going to die. Our Sukshma Sharira will continue to be with us. Our Atma, of course, is ever pure, everlasting, eternal. But our Sukhma Sharira goes with us. And the problem is that when you are not in the body, when you are out of the body, which is after death, the clarity of understanding whatever is around is like a dream where the things are fleeting. They're quickly changing. And you do sometimes, there's no logically understandable 
state as far as we are concerned because we have experience of victory. So when your mind is not got clarity, you it's very, very difficult to understand the Brahmagyanam. Now he talked about what happens in the Gandharva Lok, which is the word of arts, dance, music, and enjoyment. The knowledge is also vague, but it's like seeing the face in the water. When you see face in the water, if the water is clear, you can see the face, but it is subject to modifications and distortions. Suppose there is a wind, your face would not be clear. So in the Gandharva Loka, the availability of your mind or whatever the mind you have in that state to understand the Brahma Jnana is very, very poor. Next slide. Sir. And also knowledge which is acquired in Brahma Loka is not is also as clear as light and darkness. And I think Ullas has mentioned this Akshar Brahma Yoga of the Gita's chapter, where you get the Krama Mukti. It is very, very difficult, but you can get that knowledge it is as uh, clear as black and white, but it is very difficult to reach the Brahma Loka because you have to do a lot of karma and upasana, of, which is full of sattva, where Brahmaji himself provides the knowledge and then you become, you know, you get the moksha. So Manishya Janma is the best option for the self-knowledge. Next slide, please. Now we come to this, which changes a bit of a gear in this verse, which says, Indriyanam prathak bhavam udhyastamayo chayat prathak gupt vityananam matva dhirona shochati matva by knowing the distinction of the indriyas. Now, unless there is a guru who tells you the meaning, you can't understand these verses. Utpatya mananam prathak. What do you mean by that? I will just explain it later, but right now we'll just talk about it. Which originates separately? This is the word meaning. Cha udayastamayo. Cha udayastamayo means that knowing their rise and fall, dhira, a dhira who is a yogi, he does not grieve. Now, what do you mean by that? Knowing the distinctions of the sense organ, which originates separately, and knowing their rise and fall, the discriminative one does not grieve. Next slide, please. So here in this verse, the Atma Anatma Viveka is highlighted. Now, how do you get that? Now, when we refer ourselves to my body, as myself. It is important to understand that what I am dealing with in this world is first of all my body. And that is what we call as the sthula existence of the sharira trayam, which are of course three, the sthula, sukshma and karana. So Tattva of course describes that, that when I say I am this, what do you mean by this? Most of us, most of the time, would have a certain shape and form, a color, a complexion, we wear the likes and dislikes. But as far as the gross body is concerned, I have a certain shape and color of the body, and that is called the sthul existence of mine. When I talk about that, what is my sukshma aspect, I talk about my mind, which of course has likes and dislikes. And our likes and dislikes, which has traveled for multiple births, depend upon what kinds of gunas and karma falas we have accumulated. So that gives you the sukshma sharira. And of course, what is the karana sharira, which we call as the causal, where we potential were both in the state before shrishti, before the manifestations, whatever is existence in the potential form and the example given is the seed form. That is called as the karana. We don't have to discuss what the karana means at this point. It is important to understand that most of us in our state of myself and me are talking about sthula, sukshma, and sharira only. So when I say I am old, I am referring to my sthula sharira. And we also know that the sukshma sharira, at least by knowing the shastra now, it has been since the beginning of the time. When one says that I am Aham Brahmasmi, which is what Dr. Hegade has talked about, knowing that fact through Guru Shastra Upadesha, that aparokshagyana, that indirect knowledge, which 
he mentioned what are the four methods to provide that. When I understand that Aham Brahmasmi, I'm not referring myself to be Stula, Sukshma and Karana Sharira. It refers to the Atma only. Now we go to the meaning of this verse. Next slide, please. When one identifies with the body-mind complex, obviously he worries, his worries are overpowering the identification of the Atma. And the physical and emotional aspect are part of the body-mind complex. And, you know, in this expression, Dr. Uh, Swami Parpanathananda also gives that that process of understanding is called a shodhanam, which means it's shuddha ho jana, clarity. And he, of course, talked about that avasthatraya, which is the three states of experience, jagrat, swapna, sushupti. Jnani can conclude that the sense organs are only temporary states of perception. What we tend to forget is, as we forget that, and the example given is that as if we are, when we are seeing our world through the glasses, we forget that the glasses are the one which are providing us the information. Because we're using some kind of objectification of the universe, of the things around us. Although we have eyes which are providing us the information, we have ear which is providing us the information in the form of an auditory impulse. We have, of course, the tongue, taste, and the touch. Now, what the verse tries to explain that these perceptions which gives you the sense of world are subject to change. They come and go. For example, if we are not able to see anything because we have now de developed refractory error, we have to use glasses, but we forget that we are using the glasses. Now your perception is coming through the glasses and we are thinking we are able to see it. Now, what is the real seer? We forget. So this body, which is most intimate instrument is like those reading glasses, which appear to be the subject, the previous verse. Now, if you go, it says, matva knowing yat prathak bhavam. Prathak means separate, bhavam means the distinction. By knowing that, Whatever we perceive by our senses through the sense organs are giving us information which is separate. For example, eyes give us separate information, ear give us separate information, and these information which we obtain are prathak. They are not same. But it gives you a composite information about the world around us. And these information which we obtain are also subject to udhyastamayo. Udaya means to come up. For example, the sun comes up and then it becomes asta. So when the sun comes, we call it the udaya. And when it becomes asta, when it goes in the evening, we call asta. That means something which rises and falls. So all the perception of the universe, which we have in the form of the worldly objects obtained through the sense organs are prathak prathak, are separate and they are subject to rise and fall. And the discriminative one understands that and is not affected by the, the, the instability, non eternal or not being not eternalness of that existence which we perceive through our body-mind complex. So once he perceives that I am not this body-mind complex, he disidentify with the body. And because grief or sorrow is only because of our identification with the body. And once self-knowledge comes, this goes away. My mortality is only body's mortality and not mine. So the objectification that body is separate from myself is the declaration by obtaining Brahma Jnana and it needs a declaration that I am the Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi. So Yat Prathak Bhav means the distinction, Indriya Naam of the sense organs, Utpadya Mana Naam Prathak, which originates separately, Na Cha Udat, and knowing their rise and fall, the discriminative one 
nasochati does not grip. The instrument of mind arises and resolves, but I am present as the witness is the most important learning of the Vedanta. Next slide, please. So that was my last slide. So this understanding that whatever I am perceiving through my body-mind complex in the form of sense organs is only a bodily perception for me to have interaction possible in the world. But I am not the body-mind complex. I am that which is the real perceiver, the Sakshi Tattvam. This is the most important expression and that is what is conveyed in this verse. Hari Om. Thank you very much, sir. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Chanting the mantra 2.3.7 Indri Ebhya Param Manaha Manasas Sattva Muttamam Sattva Dadhi Mahanatma Mahato Vyakta Muttamam The literal meaning of this mantra is Mind is superior to the sense organs Intellect is superior to the mind Mahat is superior to the intellect. The unmanifest is superior to Mahat. In the next slide, 2.3.7 mantra of Kathopanishad is repetition of the mantra 1.3.10. Atma Anatma Viveka that is the discrimination of the self or the Atma from the non-self using the method of Panchakosha Viveka or analysis of five sheets to discover I am the pure consciousness which is our true nature and is the ultimate goal is discussed here. The Anatma comprises of five layers called Panchakosha. In the method, we withdraw layer by layer or withdraw from one layer and identify with the more subtle layer that is grossest to subtle to subtler to subtlest which means gradual withdrawal from the grossest Annamaya Kosha to Manomaya, then to, I'm sorry, to Pranamaya, then to Manomaya, then Vijnanamaya, then Anandamaya, and finally the subtlest Atma. This method of going step by step from something that is obvious to less obvious is also known as Arundhati Nyaya in Vedanta. Just like the mountaineers cannot reach the peak instantaneously, they gradually go from base to base as they climb higher so that they get used to the rarefied atmosphere. In the same way, from the grossest state, the mind cannot comprehend the subtlest Atma. So, this gradual withdrawal method is used so that the mind gets sensitized to comprehend the subtlest Atma or Brahman as our true or real nature. In the next slide, the sequence that is followed is we withdraw from the world and identify with the body, that is Annamaya Kosha. Then withdraw from the body and identify with sense organs. This portion is not mentioned in the mantra. We have to assume this in the context of this mantra. Mantra starts from Indri Ebhya Param Manaha. That means Yamadharma Raja in the mantra says, mind is superior or subtler to the sense organs. Swamiji says, in the context of the five sheets, something that is superior is subtler and has control over the other sheet. Mind gathers all the data from the sense organs and is responsible for their activities and hence has control over sense organs. In this scenario, it would mean we have to withdraw from the sense organs and identify with the superior or subtle mind, which is Manomaya Kosha. Manasa Sattva Muttamam, which means superior to the mind is intellect. Mind represents the doubting or emotional faculty, while the intellect, the Sattvam in the mantra, has the capacity to rationally analyze or understand or discriminate to do the right thing and to clarify doubts. For example, understanding the Vedanta session we are in right now is with the help of intellect. And so intellect is superior or subtler than the mind. We withdraw from the mind 
to more subtler intellect. That is manomaya, manomaya kosha. We withdraw from the manomaya kosha to vijnanamaya kosha. In the next slide, sattva dadi mahanatma in the mantra. That is from the individual intellect. That is sattva. We should learn to identify with the total intellect which is Mahan Atma. That means we have to shift our attention from the individual intellect to the total intellect or cosmic mind or Hiranya Garbha. In the next slide, this process is very important because to gain and assimilate the knowledge of the self or Aham Brahmasmi because that is because Brahman is both subtle and all-pervading. Hence, this is an important step in preparing the mind to be subtle and expansive to comprehend the all-pervading Atma or Brahman. It is just like we identify with the state, expand further to the country, then onto continent, expand further to a human being, then a living being, Finally, just a being, which includes living as well as non-living beings. That is, shifting our identification to the very existence, I am, which is common to all and includes the whole or entire creation or the universe. So, Yamadharma Raja says, to learn to identify with total intellect or Hiranyagarbha or one cosmic mind or intellect that is learning to understand the individual is not different from the total that becomes clear then once that becomes clear then we can say I am the total intellect which is manifesting through several individual beings in the next slide then it is Mahat Avyaktam Uttamam superior to Mahat that is Hiranyagarbha is Avyaktam or the whole creation, or the Hiranyagarbha in potential form, which is the subtlest in the material world, and we have to learn to identify with Avyaktam, or the whole creation in the potential form. In the next slide, Swamiji says, as mentioned in scriptures, blankness that is experienced in deep sleep state is the Karana Shariram, or the causal body for an individual. In deep sleep, the body-mind senses are dissolved and we experience blankness, blankness due to suspension of all kinds of activities or operations like sensory, emotional and intellectual activities. When the seeker learn to identify with total intellect, which we just discussed a little, uh, a little earlier, or the cosmic mind, that blankness is collection of all the causal body of the beings or the whole creation in the potential form. And we have to learn to identify with avyaktam, which is the collection of Karana Shariram or the whole creation or Hiranyagarbha in the potential form. And what is superior to avyaktam, which is the Karana Shariram or the total causal body? That is discussed in the next mantra, which is 2.3.8. Thank you, sir. Haryom. Shri Guru Vyo Namaha. Avyak Tatu Paraha Parusha Vyapako Alinga Evacha Yam Nyatva Mukshate Jantu Amritatvam Cha Gachati. Atma is indeed superior to the unmanifest. It is all pervasive and attributeless. On knowing that, the mortal is free and attains immortality. The word meanings Purushahatu, Atma is indeed, Paraha Avyaktat, superior to the unmanifest, Vyapakaha, it is all pervasive, Evachalingaha, and attributeless, Nyatva Yam, on knowing that, Jantu, the mortal, Muchete is free. Cha gachati and attains Amritatva, immortality. In this mantra, Lord Yama establishes the superiority of the Atma. 
He shows that when the mortal can identify with the all-pervading and attributeless Atman, then he attains freedom and immortality. Here, the Atma is called Purusha as it resides inside and outside the body. Atma is the supreme goal. When the mortal attains immortality, the inward spiritual journey ends. Let's look at the nature of Atma. It is Vyapakaha or all-pervading, alinga or attributeless. Atma is compared to the water in the waves, bubbles and sprays. The wave becomes immortal only when it identifies with the water. Similarly, the mortal has to identify with his true nature, the Atma, to become immortal. So how does the mortal attain immortality? Lord Yama explains that one needs Brahma Jnanam to attain this goal. The Upanishads give the method of Panchakosha Viveka. Let us understand Avyaktam in this mantra. The micro model for Avyaktam is our sleep or Anamaya Kosha. Our senses, emotions and intellect resolve into the deep sleep state. Next slide, sir. In, in this state, the mortal experiences a blankness. This blankness is not nothingness. It is the potential state of creation. This potentiality is called avyaktam, which is the subtlest state of matter. Atma is subtler than this blankness. This blankness can be objectified, but the Atma cannot be objectified. The awareness of blankness is subtler than blankness. This awareness or consciousness is Atma. The one who experiences the blankness is the experiencer or subject, and he is the real eye of Purusha. Hence, the Atma is superior to the unmanifest or avyaktam. When the mortal recognizes this Purusha in all other living beings, he is released from the notion of mortality. He is not released from mortality as he was never mortal. When the notion of mortality is dropped, then he claims immortality. Swami Paramatmananda Ji gives the example of gold. Gold shines when you remove the impurities. The natural luster of gold is only obstructed by the impurities. In the same way, the natural Im immortality is only obstructed by the notion of mortality. Similarly, samsara is created by a false notion. And what is this false notion? That I am the body-mind complex. It is an intellectual problem regarding the true nature. This problem can be solved intellectually only. And knowledge through scriptural studies is the only solution for this. Concluding, Lord Yama says that the knowledge we get from the scriptures helps us to identify with the all-pervading and attributeless Purusha. And thus we attain freedom and immortality. Thank you. Hari Om. Jai Gurudev. Na sandrushe tishtati rupam asya. Na chakshusha pashyati kaschanainam. Rida manisha manasa abhikluptaha. Ya etad viduhu amrutaste bhavanti. Meaning, the nature of this Atma does not fall in the range of perception. No one sees this with the eye. It is revealed by the insight gained through the intellect which resides in the heart. Those who know this become immortal. Samsara is a product of false notion. It's an intellectual problem regarding one's own higher nature which leads to sorrow which is caused due to false identification, considering oneself as a finite entity, jiva. Taradi shokam atmavit, knower of the self goes beyond the sorrow. Matva diro na sochati, one who has withdrawn from the false identification goes beyond the sorrow. We have seen in a previous verses 7 and 8, Process of turning attention within through meditation. In the present verse, we are going to see that 
Vedanta student who followed Upasana, who have purified and lifted the mind through surrender or by devotion to Lord, might have a strong conditioning to have a darshan of Lord outside. Ishwara darshan might happen due to the devotion of a bhakta. The Nirguna formless Lord appears to Saguna form, just as a water taking the form of ice. But in any form which we can see that it has a beginning, will have an end like in Rama and Krishna avatars. Few instances in the lives of devotees who were Saguna Upasakas like Namadev who were playing with the idol of Vitala and in the case of Ramakrishna Prahamsa who are a great devotee of Mother Kali. Both of them were revealed Nirguna form of Lord. Now Sadrushi Tistati Rupamasya from the higher standpoint form of Atma cannot be perceived by eyes as Atma is formless. It cannot be grasped by senses. Na chakshusha pashyati kashyanainam. Here eyes indicate all other senses. Taste, smell, touch, hear and vision. Then how to know the Atma? Trida manisha means through the heart. The right way is not to go outside but to go inwards. Trida here indicates the Subtle intellect, which is tuned with the pure mind, gains the intuitive capability. Again and again in Upanishad, it comes that by senses, one cannot know the Atma. Atma, the inner self, is not perceived by sense perception because the very senses are enlivened by the self like a torch. When we put on, when the Batteries want to see how the bulb is getting light. But when the batteries are out, there will be no light as a bulb does not have a light of its own. So too, Atma is not perceptible by any of the sense organs. The way is not going outside but to go inwards. In the last two mantras, we have seen this. Trida Manisha Manasa Abhikluptaha, faculty of intuition which is dormant in intellect is manifested with the combination of subtle intellect and the pure mind. Then one intuitively knows Aham Brahma Asmi. Mahavagya helps to understand and experience the Atma by destroying one's ignorance. Ya Etat Viduhu Amrutaste Bhavanti, those who experience this truth becomes immortal. Jai Gurti. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Katopanishad verse 2.3.10. From the previous verses, we know that Lord Yama, being a Brahmanishta, gives Guru Shastra Upadesha about Atma Jnana to his extraordinary disciple Nachiketas. The Supreme Brahman, Purusha, is known to be the infinite, all-pervading essence and substratum of the entire universe. Also, the extremely subtle indweller hidden in the cave of the heart of every creature. This Brahman is both immanent and transcendental. The knowing of the nature of the Supreme Self does not exist within the range of human sensory perception. That is, not inferable by the acts of seeing, hearing, thinking. This Brahman, who is Sarva Bhuta Antar Atma, from Brahma to mere mortals, is hidden and covered by Maya, Avidya. Therefore, no one realizes this Atma as the indwelling self of all. Despite its hidden, inaccessible state, the means of attainment of the Supreme Self or Brahman is being stated. Then how does one know the Supreme Self? Swami Chinmayananda says, this verse gives a clear exposition 
of that state of eternal auspiciousness experienced when the self, Jivatma, meets the Supreme Self, Paramatma, in the Samadhi state. This state is defined by Shruti as the state of vitally experiencing the absolute reality of the self. The verses, Yada Panchavati Sthante Gnanani Manasasaha Buddhischana Vichestati Tam Ahuhu Paramam Gatim. Translation At the time when the five senses of knowledge, together with the mind, are at rest in the self alone, after desisting from the sense objects and their thoughts, and the intellect does not engage in its own activities, that state they call the highest state, the state of awakened intuition in the still intellect located in the cave of the heart of the seeker. Swamiji says, the only method by which a seeker can realize his self is through the faculty of intuition, which is lying dormant in the man's intellect. Lord Yama in the Ratha Kalpana has associated this intellect as the charioteer and the Atma in the worldly state as the passenger. The intellect controls the workings of the mind. When the mind is silent, the intellect gains an inner peace. An intellect thus in complete peace becomes quiet. Its activities die itself away or disappears. The seeker's ego transcends its mind and intellect, revealing an awakened, alert, newly born potency in us called intuition. Intuition is nothing but the capacity to know the knowledge. It is with this intuition that a seeker comes to realize the self. Swami Paramarthananda in the verses 10 and 11 says, Lord Yama discusses the culmination of yoga, vyasa and upasana and how to achieve the meditative state of samadhi to realize the Supreme Brahman. Swamiji says, one can see one's own eyes only through the mirror. No other instrument is useful and a pair of good eyes. Likewise, Shastra Dharpana is the only instrument available for knowing Brahman and a pristine, subtle mind and intellect. The special qualifications to be cultivated by a perfect student of Vedanta coming to experience intuitively the absolute truth as his own self are, as Shruti emphasizes, faith in Guru Shastra Upadesha, practice sadhana chatushtaya, jnana nishta to pursue shravana manana nididhyasana and practice the eight limbs of ashtanga yoga, which leads to the final state of samadhi, where one reaches a meditative state of bliss or oneness. As the culmination of the above mentioned practices, a disciplined mind is developed that can concentrate on the object of meditation without distraction, leading to a state of absorption or yoga, the chitta vritti nirodha state. In this meditative state, the man with a discriminating mind merges or dissolves the organ of speech, meaning all sense organs into the mind, then merge the mind into the intellect, merge this into the great soul, Mahat Atmani, that is, the seeker should make his intellect as clear in its nature as is the firstborn Hiranyagarbha. And this should sink into the peaceful Atmani or Purusha, the real self, which is within all and is witness of all modifications of the intellect from gross to subtle. As one sees oneself very distinctly reflected in a pristine mirror, Similarly, Atmani in one's own intellect. The idea is when the intellect has become spotless like a mirror, there springs up an intuitive knowing, a distinct vision of the self, as in a dream that is coming face to face with the supreme truth, thus intuitively allowing the seeker to become self-aware of itself. 
the highly evolved ego comes to reflect the light of eternal knowledge. The reflection merges itself in a process of knowing to become one with the Supreme Self or Brahman. This is the highest state of being, the Samadhi state. Thank you, sir. Hari Om. Thanks to all our speakers. We'll conclude with Purnamada. Om Purnamada. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachati Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyati Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om